I think I made a huge mistake here. So this is it, Apple's $1,100 smartphone, the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I've been using it for the past week and I think it's finally time to give you guys my overall opinions and thoughts and whether the extra month of wait and the extra cash you're spending on this phone for the new camera features are worth it. So inside the iPhone 12 Pro Max is Apple's A14 Bionic processor, which to be quite honest with you guys is really, really fast. If you guys didn't get a chance to watch my iPhone 12 review, I'll link that down below in the description. But to sum it all up for you guys, the phone's performance is top notch. Not a single app crash, lagged out, or gave me any issues when quickly switching between apps. And even when I was playing games, I didn't feel the phone heating up like some of the newer flagships that I've tested recently. Now, I don't game all that often on my phone, but when I do, it's usually only for about 30 minutes or so. Now, the display on the Pro Max is massive. It's a 6.7 inch OLED display that looks amazing to look at. Watching movies or YouTube videos is really enjoyable, and I think the speakers on the Pro Max actually sounds a little bit better than my 12, but not by much. Now, scrolling through social media, writing emails, or playing games on the Pro Max is a lot of fun. Although, I wish that Apple enabled some sort of true multitasking ability like on the iPad. In my opinion, the display is big enough to have two apps running at once, and I think that a lot of Pro users wouldn't mind having that feature at all, because I always find myself switching between apps quite often, whether I'm sending photos via iMessage or attaching files via email. I think that would make the Pro Max a lot more Pro-like if it had true multitasking features. Now, before we move on to the overall build and feature, the new 12 Pro Max, I just wanted to quickly touch up on battery life. Now, it's really hard to review a phone's battery life because everyone uses their phone differently. I'm usually on social media apps and watching videos on YouTube, so I'm getting about seven hours of screen on time on average. But if I wasn't on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube most of the time, then I'd probably average way more. But the Pro Max can easily last you an entire day, maybe a day and a half, without the worries of having to plug the phone in midday. Plus, iPhones have one of the best standby time in any smartphones that I've tested, so if you're concerned about battery life, don't worry, this phone will last by the time you're heading to bed. Now, one thing that I did mention in my iPhone 12 review is that the back of the phones on the Pro models have this nice matte finish to it, which looks absolutely cool. But the trade-off here is that the stainless steel sides are super glossy, which attracts a ton of fingerprints, and it just feels a little bit harder to grip the phone in my opinion. A great solution without using a case is to buy these frame scans from our sponsor Dbrand, which can help get rid of the glossy stainless steel sides and fingerprints without adding bulk to an already huge device. There's a ton of different colors you can choose from, but I would highly suggest picking up the Matrix or matte black skins to give you the best grip, but also offering a cool neutral modern look. If you want to pick up a set of skins from Dbrand, check out the first link in the description below or go to dbrand.com slash heymarkl. And special shout out to Dbrand for sponsoring a portion of this video. All right, so now that we've got most of my impressions of the overall device out of the way, let's talk about its cameras. I think this is the most important feature that we need to talk about on the 12 Pro Max. So what they did with the Pro Max is include a completely new sensor that's 47% larger with bigger pixels to dramatically increase the amount of light gathered on the wide camera. There's also a new image stabilizer which stabilizes the actual sensor versus the lens. And there's a new 65 millimeter telephoto lens which is my favorite new feature. So what I noticed right away without taking photos are the cameras on the actual device. The camera modules are bigger and a little bit more pronounced in my opinion. Here's the difference between the 12 Pro Max, the iPhone 12, and the iPhone 11 Pro. Now when it comes to its actual image quality, there's not a huge difference from the regular 12 to the 12 Pro Max. The shots on the 12 Pro Max are probably 25% sharper, a little bit more contrasty, and the colors look a little bit more vibrant, but not by much. But other than that, you can get similar looking shots from the rest of the iPhone 12 lineup. Now you do have slightly better bokeh on the 12 Pro Max due to the larger sensor, but it's really not that noticeable if you're taking normal everyday photos. Now one thing I am a fan of though is that new 65mm telephoto lens. If you've been watching my videos for a bit, you may have noticed that most of my product shots are shot with a longer focal length to give it a more compressed look. There's little to no barrel distortion in any of my shots, and that's the reason why I love the new telephoto lens. It's the perfect portrait lens in my opinion. 
Now, one thing that still annoys me till this day with the stock camera app is that even if you tap on the 2.5x telephoto lens on the Pro Max, the phone will just zoom in 2.5 times digitally if it senses that it needs more light to expose your images properly. I wish that there's a way to disable this feature if you want to shoot with the actual telephoto lens versus zooming it in digitally. But if you're fed up with this like I am, I highly suggest you guys pick up the Halide camera app on the App Store, which gives you more granular controls, manual focusing, and also the ability to shoot in RAW. Now, when it comes to low light, the shots out of the 12 Pro Max still looks good. There's less noise in the shadows. There's less motion blur if you're using night mode thanks to the new sensor shift OIS. And overall, I think it's just a little bit better than the 12 and 12 Pro. It's really disappointing that there's not a huge difference between the Pro Max and the regular 12 series, but unfortunately, the differences that I saw from shooting and reviewing the photos on my computer are very minimal. A few things that I did notice was night mode on the 12 Pro Max is slightly quicker at shooting than my 12, and that the shots look a little bit sharper, and that's it. Colors look fairly similar, and blacks are slightly darker with less noise on the Pro Max, but you'd really have to pixel peep and zoom in on the photos to be able to tell the difference between the new camera system on the 12 Pro Max. According to Halide, the maximum ISO on the 12 Pro Max is 7600 ISO, which is the highest ISO sensitivity ever on an iPhone. And to give you guys a bit of reference, last year's Pro Max has a maximum ISO of 3000. So if you're looking for a mobile camera system that can shoot incredible low light photos, the iPhone 12 Pro Max is not a bad choice. Now, when it comes to video, you should all know by now that iPhones have the best video camera capabilities on any smartphone, and it just got better on the Pro Max thanks to that new sensor shift OIS system. Now, I don't really shoot videos all that often on my phone, but I did notice how stable the footage is on the new 12 Pro Max. Now, if you're serious about mobile filmmaking, or maybe you want to start your own YouTube channel and don't want to buy a separate camera and a phone, I would save up and use the Pro Max as your main camera. I think the image stabilizer on the iPhone is actually better than my Fuji camera, and that says a lot about the new OIS system. The sample videos that I shot on the 12 Pro Max felt like it was on a gimbal or floating on a tight string because I couldn't see any weird jitters around the corners, and the videos look really smooth. Now with Pro Raw coming later in iOS 14.3, maybe we'll see more camera changes for the Pro Max, but as of right now, there's really not a big difference between the regular 12, the 12 Pro, the 12 Mini, and the 12 Pro Max. The cash that you'll end up spending on the Pro Max for the camera alone is just not worth it. But if you're looking for an iPhone with the best battery life, the biggest display, and have all the newest features, then sure. The 12 Pro Max has all of that, and I recommend you pick it up if you want all of the newest features. But if you don't really care about having the newest camera system, then the 12 or 12 Pro is a better purchase in my opinion. Save that extra cash and pick yourself up a few accessories and maybe even Apple Care Plus and just wait for the next generation of iPhones to come out. Because right now, I think the iPhone iPhone 12 Pro Max is just not worth it. There's a lot more that Apple could have done to differentiate the Pro Max from the rest of the 12 lineup, like true multitasking on the software side, and a much better camera system for it to be truly worth its price tag. So after this video is uploaded, I'll most likely be packing this back up and returning it to Apple. And it's a shame because I truly want to love this phone, but it's just not worth it.